Hey guys, Killstokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast, another video episode for you. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about making adjustments to your trading strategy. So a little bit of a evaluation as a trader. Now, if you guys are new to the Trading Coach Podcast, I have literally over a thousand episodes at your disposal. Do me a favor, take the 10 episode challenge, just go through, choose 10 random episodes, or just Google search Trading Coach Podcast and the subject of your liking and see what comes up. But give the show a chance and make it a part of your regular routine. So I got a question today from a trader on our tier one trading platform. By the way, I am a co-founder and head trader over at tier1trading.com. I don't think I mentioned that at all here on the podcast, which I should, but yeah, I do that. Um, and I thought it'd be an interesting one to discuss with you guys. So here we go. Question says, hey, Akil, hope you're doing well. This is uh, my first year of live trading. I started at the beginning of the year and then trading advanced pattern formations, bats, Gartleys, and ciphers. Started the year hot the first three months. Woo! But after that, it's been mostly sideways movement on my equity curve. To my question, the bat and the Gartley patterns are performing more or less according to my back testing. So uh, very similar to what the expectations were per our traders back testing results. However, the ciphers are performing much, much, yep, too much is that's when you know it's bad, worse than my back testing. I am currently trading at a 9% hit rate on ciphers. Yes, you did not hear that wrong a 9% hit rate on ciphers. Bats are 53%, a little bit worse than the back testing averages. And Gartley's are 70%, a little bit better than the back testing averages, right? Have you experienced anything like the scenario where two of three patterns are performing according to back testing and not the third? Um, and I'll get into the next part of the question later. But I'm, I, I don't rehearse this. So I'm trying to figure out if I should read it first or not. Um, but the answer to the trader's question, yes. So I, I have had experiences like this. I trade all three patterns um, myself. And I have had experiences where they all perform differently. Um, at two ranges. And, and usually it's more kind of like uh, the former, what the trader said, where one is kind of outperforming my expectations slightly, one is underperforming my expectations slightly, the other one's right in the middle, and it ends up being the boring, consistent, methodical trend that is my trading year each and every year. Very profitable, but very kind of routine, very expected, very non expected exciting, I guess you can say. This doesn't sell courses, but that's not my job. My job is to tell you what real trading looks like. Um, with that being said, I have had years where I had one, either one pair or one particular pattern underperform drastically. And it's something that you want to pay attention to. And what I told the trader was this. The first thing we need to do, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll walk you through kind of how I do it. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to decide when do we make our decisions in trading. And this should be something that's in your trading plan. Your trading plan is your business plan. Not only does it tell you your rules of engagement, so your routines, how to get involved, what you should be taking, what you shouldn't be taking, but it is the rest of your business plan as well. There, you know, the, the first part of your trading plan should have a section there about psychology and philosophy. How do you feel about the markets? Why do you deserve to be a good trader? There needs to be emergency contact numbers. There needs to be, you know, money management strategies and distribution, meaning that, hey, I take blank percentage out of my account for profit while I roll this much back in, right? Anything you can think of. Part of that plan is kind of, uh, you know, what if stuff, what if blank, boop, right, goes wrong plan, right? What if blank hits the fan? How do you handle that situation? How do you properly evaluate yourself? And for me, um, because I'm an athlete, I work in quarters, so three month segments where I do evaluations, big evaluations every quarter. So like full kind of breakdowns of my performance. I obviously I keep track of it on a trade by trade basis, week by week basis, month by month basis, as far as like writing in the data, but I don't really dig into the details, um, you know, but once every quarter. And in my plan, I can never, I, I do not allow myself, I do not give myself permission, no, right, to make adjustments after one quarter of trading. Now, 
to put things in perspective, right? We're talking about me being a swing trader, right? So operating mainly on the four hour and the one hour charts. So that kind of, kind of gives you an idea about the frequency. There's not a, a whole bunch of trades in that period. I would say like, I probably take maybe like 50 trades a quarter. If we're talking to someone who's a day trader, they may be taking 50 trades a month easily. If your frequency is that high, you may, do, you may need to reevaluate on a shorter, uh, term basis. So it may be monthly or something like that. But from a swing trading perspective, um, I cannot make any changes every or any quarter because right any after after one quarter, because one quarter doesn't give me a big enough time sample size. It doesn't give me a big enough trade sample size to figure out if something is a trend or if something is like a blip. And what I mean by a blip is this, right? We have periods where the market slows down and you may not get trades. Ugh. You have periods where the market is choppy and you may not get opportunities or it's trending, you may, got, may not get opportunities, right? There are short periods of the market where the market just stinks and it doesn't do what you like or maybe what you're trading is just bad and that's okay. You know, you usually see some sort of recovery from that. So first quarter, I just keep an eye on things. I say if something is like the cipher our trader mentioned performing badly, I keep an eye on it. I say, hmm, I'm going to watch you. Let's see if this is something that is just a blip or something I should pay more attention to, right? We fast forward to the next quarter. I do my evaluation. Typically, everything has responded or flipped or whatever like that. But if, if that thing that I was keeping an eye on is still up to its naughty business, this is where I want to dive in deeper and figure out why. And when we're talking about drawdowns, there's typically two types of drawdowns. There are natural drawdowns and self-inflicted drawdowns, right? Natural drawdowns are ones that you're doing everything right and you know it's just not working out in your favor, right? The market gods have said, no, no profit for you. <laughs> you're just, you know, it happens, right? We all go through losing trees, we all go through drawdowns, but you've done every, everything correctly. You're taking good trades, you're not missing trades, yada, yada, yada. The market's conditions just stink. A uh, self-inflicted drawdown, however, is when you're making mistakes. Are you missing trades? Are you taking trades you're not supposed to take? Are you taking targets early? Are you pushing stops back? Are you entering early, exiting early, entering late, exiting late? Like any of those, any of the handful of kind of trading mistakes that you can make, are you making those? And if so, you want to do an A-B split test to see, is that the reason that you're underperforming or do the markets just suck, right? So after a 12 month or after that uh that six month period that's where i'm allowed to make change right so after i've kept an eye on things for a quarter if we get two consistent quarters like that and everything is natural i'm not doing anything wrong right that is when i can make an adjustment to my trading and i say make an adjustment because i don't mean dropping everything i'm not going to take for example cipher patterns and be like you know what half a year has been bad I'm not trading you anymore, but I'm gonna to try to make any adjustments that I can make based off of what I find in my research, whether it's, you know, do I need a little bit of a larger stop loss? Do I need a little bit of a, a, a shorter target? Do I need to adjust position sizes? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that, right? Whatever I discover during that evaluation process, I wanna make my adjustment and I wanna see how that adjustment plays out for the rest of the year. Is it something that helped my trading? Is it, or did it make no difference and I'm still a loser? If we go a year and things still haven't gone well, only then would I decide to drop something. Only then would I decide like, hey, I'm going to take this pair or this strategy or tactic, whatever it may be, and I'm going to remove it from my trading. This kind of brings on to the second point of our trader's question. He says, I have back tested the trades from January 1 until August um, uh, 31st, 2004. I can see that I have done some mistakes in my live trading might be expected and, and that is expected right there's a reason that we don't expect to um in in, in reality achieve our back testing results right the back testing results are perfect scenario right because in back testing we don't miss anything we get in perfectly we get out perfectly if we miss something we just scroll back and we take it again back testing is your best case scenario real life we are human beings, right? Human beings, we are we are perfectly imperfect. We make mistakes, right? There are numerous mistakes you can make. We're going to make some of them. Even myself, yours truly is not the perfect trader. My goal was to have a year of 100% perfection, good trades, um, but I've never achieved that. And I've been doing this for, what is it, 18 years now? I don't know how long it is. Never achieved that. Um, 
I'm not saying I make a massive amount of mistakes, but I, I still make weird mistakes. Like I, 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 I don't do this anymore, but I used to kind of sometimes use a wrong order. I used to have a buy limit instead of a sell limit. Earlier this year, I put an order on, um, uh, what was it? I put an order on Euro Yen instead of Dollar Yen by accident just because I was rushing and I had Euro Yen on the mind and, and entered it at the wrong thing. Um, I will sometimes misjudge my targets, right? I, I'll, I'll, most of it comes through rushing now that I think about it, right? Um, where I won't look left enough or I won't look at my indicator and be like, there's an overlapping level of structure, but I take it right above it instead of below it and I miss out by a few pips or even handle numbers, psychological number, right? There's a handful of things, but we're not gonna achieve perfection. So we always wanna estimate performing a little bit worse than our back testing. So it's okay to make mistakes. Um, so I have some missed trades, I have some forced trades, uh, look back in hindsight, but even if I would have traded perfectly, uh, the hit rate for the ciphers are still much lower than the lowest year in my back testing. That brings up a good point as well. That back testing is not just to tell us that something is profitable, that's a good part of it, but it also becomes our reference reference guide, it becomes something we can compare against. So it's like, you know, a question that I typically ask traders when they're on losing streaks or, hey, what is your typical losing streak? Is it this percent? How many weeks? How many trades? And they're like, well, I don't know. Well, look at your back testing, right? Because all of those years of trading, you should have accumulated a massive amount of data that tells you, hey, a 5% losing streak? Yeah, that's normal. Uh, of, uh, or a, a 10 trade losing streak? Yeah, that happens. Maybe not often, but it has happened before. And again, that's when you can kind of discover if something is natural within the flow of expectation or kind of out of the ordinary, which means you got to keep an eye on it. I don't know why I keep doing this, but I'm going to I'm going to do it the rest of the episode, right? It's my thing today. Um so they've still performed much much lower than expected in my back testing. I have 12 pairs in my portfolio, back tested 6 years, blah 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 blah. Um I've given the cipher pattern 9 months and now will soon feel like I don't want to trade it anymore. Seems like my, seems like my eyes only are uh see losing ciphers. Do you have any tips and blah 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 blah. blah. And one of the responses, I just got a live response from this trader again. We've been going back and forth with the conversation, so I'm going to reload this real quick. But something we spoke about with the trader as well was understanding that, hey, there's nothing wrong with with um, with dumping. So I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. There's nothing wrong with dumping a pattern, right, or dumping a strategy. If something isn't working or you feel like you're losing your eye for eye for it, um, there's nothing wrong with dumping, the, the, dumping it. This trader has three patterns that he trades. Two are doing well. One is not doing well. Trading is your business. This is no different than having an employee that just isn't working out, right? You've got a handful of employees, a handful are doing well. There's one that you would expect to do well. You brought him in or brought him or her in with the expectation that they're going to do well. And it just hasn't worked out. And sometimes you got to let people go. It's no different than a, a sports team, right? You draft a player, you sign a player, uh, <coughs> hazard, <coughs> uh, and sometimes it just doesn't work out and you got to let them go. And you never know what the, what, what, what the future holds, right? You could regain your eye. Sometimes time away makes things easier when you come back. And that strategy can re-enter your portfolio and re-enter your trading plan. Sometimes it's gone forever and it just frees up more time, space, energy, position size to invest more in the things that are more helpful for your trading. And that's a, a benefit as well. So it's hard because when we do all the work and we invest all the time and the energy, we sometimes feel like we owe it to the thing that we need to trade the thing. Um, or we feel like, man, because I invested so much, I don't want to kind of, I don't want that to be a waste of time if I don't trade it. And it's never a waste of time. Again, like I said, you never know when you may come back and use it again. Um, but also, you're still training your eyes, right? You're still learning different things in the market. Time in the market is never a waste because that observation, you may not notice it now, but it will come back to help you later. So um, a good little bit on just kind of what to do if you find yourself in this situation. This trader is not the only one. He won't be the first. He won't be the last. Um, so if you're going through something similar out there, hopefully this is helpful. And uh, yeah, leave any comments below. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Keep your eye out for the next episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. We release these three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on your favorite podcasting app, including some video episodes that are viewable, I believe, on YouTube and Spotify. I don't really know how it works. I just push play and talk. But I appreciate you guys joining. Like and review if you haven't done so already. It's a massive help to the show. And until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care.